We are gonna do By it again. By the way, don't scream when you come in. Yeah. The, the mic peaks. Welcome to Downshift, everyone. That's terrible. This is <laughs> awful. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Downshift, everyone. My name is Paulo, and this is the Subaru Ascent. And my name is Matt, and this thing found itself with a facelift last year, and now it's competing in a very competitive segment that's going through a bit of a renaissance. So does the Subaru Ascent have what it takes to stick at the top of the segment? We're here to find out with the best and the rest, starting with the rest. We're gonna start with the third row, the point of this whole segment, and I wanna show you how you get in the third row. There's a couple different ways. This is the main way. You pull that lever and it just gets itself out of the way. It's mechanical, so it, it's nice and quick and it's probably not gonna break. And then you can just step in, there's a nice step here, but once you get into the third row, you find that it's pretty apparent that this is one of the older in the segment, and that's because a lot of the newer competitors have bigger third rows. The Toyota Grand Highlander has a lot bigger third row. The Palisade, the Telluride, they all have bigger third rows. The VW Atlas is probably the second behind the Grand Highlander. So this, this is a little tight. And then talking about the engine, you do get one engine option here. It's not unheard of. That's kind of what you get from the Atlas and the Palisade and the Telluride. Here you have Subaru's 2.4 turbocharged boxer four cylinder. It's the same engine that you actually get in the WRX, their performance sedan, which actually sounds like a good thing, but you have to remember that this is a big, heavy three row family SUV. So it does start to feel a little bit underpowered. Now, maybe they've gone with this engine for the fuel economy reason, a smaller turbocharged engine, maybe more efficient, but is that yeah. true? Unfortunately, that's not necessarily the case. So you get 21 MPG combined, and in the NAV6 Palisade and Tele, you're basically getting the same thing. Yep. I can't tell if you're trying to do the kick gesture or get the ice cold off. Both. <laughs> then we'll talk about the trunk. It's not kick gesture, which I think it kind of should be at this point. This is their flagship SUV, but it is powered. You do get power, close, and lock, which you like to see. It is on the left-hand side, which is the only car, aside from the Durango, which had it here, this is the only car that we've ever tested that has the power button on the left-hand side of the latch. Just a little bit weird. But anyway, you get in here, just under 18 cubic feet of space. That is the smaller end of the segment, but you do have mechanical releases. Make sure that you push it far enough, otherwise it will catch because these rear seats recline. So you have to push it far enough, and then it'll go down. And with everything down, not just the third row, but with the second row, you're gonna get about 75 cubic feet of space, which is still the, the low end of the segment. So it's not great, it's still practical. It's still perfectly practical, but it's just not competitive with the rest of the segment. And earlier we talked about how this thing isn't that powerful and it's also not that efficient, but I think both of those problems would probably be solved if they introduced a hybrid component. A lot of the newer competitors that have been introduced in the last year, the Grand Highlander, the CX-90, they're bringing not only hybrids, but also plug-in hybrids. And I think this would benefit from that. You would get more power and you get more efficiency. There might be more complexity, which will add to price, but it would be nice to have. And then changing gears and talking about all the stuff that we love about the Ascent, the first thing is obviously, and how could it not be with a week like this, the symmetrical all-wheel drive, Subaru's legendary rally-based all-wheel drive. You have it here. You've got CVT, chain-driven, all that good stuff. No one's really gonna take this thing off-road, but you do have 8.7 inches of ground clearance. That's more than you're gonna get in something even like a Bronco Sport. And I have to say, with the all-wheel drive and the ground clearance, especially with all of the snow that we got dumped on this week, this has been a fabulous thing to have. Yeah, I definitely think this is one of the major highlights. There's a reason why every other car you see in Colorado is a Subaru, and it's the all-wheel drive system. Yes, and there's something specific about this all-wheel drive system that we'll talk about now. This thing doesn't have drive modes per se, but you do have X mode. And this is kind of an all-wheel drive torque distribution, traction control management system. It's just more comprehensive and finessed assessment at off-roading. So you've got not just snow, but deep snow, and not just dirt, but mud. So you've got a lot of control on how much traction and where your torque is getting sent. And let us know in the comments when you guys would switch from snow to deep snow. Is it six inches? Is it two feet? Is it 14 inches? Let us know. We are really curious. Yes. And I do have to say, I like the look of this thing too. Now we have our Ascent in autumn green metallic, which is very cool. And we have the Onyx package, which blacks out everything. We've got a blacked out front grille, blacked out front splitter. This kind of has that hexagonal texture like we saw in the WRX, but it also has this little fang here, which we've seen on the CRV, we've seen on the uh, Kona that we were in last week, and the Mustang. So that's just a weird thing that everyone seems to like these days. LED headlights, of course. You've got a little bit of cladding over here, but you've got some 
some blacked out wheel options and some blacked out wing mirror, window trim, and raised roof rails here. Again, we talked about that 8.7 inches of ground clearance. That's pretty good. That's the nice Subaru stuff. And then around back, it's a pretty simple design. You kind of have the crab grab tail lights and the simple black bar, kind of the Salvador Dali mustache that we're familiar with from Subaru. But again, blacked out accents for your badging, dual exhaust, and a little bit of textured cladding. And while we're back here, we should talk about towing. Now this Ascent maxes out at 5,000 pounds of towing capacity. It's very competitive with what we have in the rest of the segment. Something like a specially equipped Telluride or Palisade will get you a little bit more, 5,500 pounds, or five, yes, 5,500 pounds. But the 5,000 pounds that you get here is the most you've ever been able to tow with a Subaru ever. I can't feel my face anymore. Then we're gonna talk about the driving experience. And it's on the positive side of the video because it is, it's perfectly fine. And that is kind of the word that I would use to describe it. Now I will say, the 2.4 turbocharged engine that we have here, we've talked about it a little bit already, it's not the best fit for this car. But that being said, I believe this is the most powerful mill that Subaru has in their umbrella. I don't think they have a V6. It would fit the car better with its size and weight, but putting a WRX engine in here and you know playing with the power, it, it's fine, it, it's perfectly fine. Objectively, when you just drive this thing and you're not back to backing it, you're gonna have a good time. The damping is easy, the visibility is really good. It is a little raspy sounding and there is a rattle up there, although we're gonna throw all rattles out the side because it's negative degrees all week this week. So that does have a tendency to make cars rattle. But you know, the CVT is okay. Um, the braking is good. There's just, there's just not really anything that I don't like here. There's something that I really do like here though, and it's the absolute sure footedness that this thing has had in the snow in sub-zero temperatures all week. And sometimes, you know, it's not really about zero to 60. Sometimes it's just how safely are you gonna feel behind the wheel with your family in the back seat. So Subaru Ascent, it's all right with me. And now we have to talk about the rear seats. First of all, the rear doors open 90 degrees. That's really nice, really practical, easy to load children, etc. You also have window shades. Look at that, times two. And you have 19 different cup holders around the entire interior. Subaru is incredibly proud of this. I'm not sure why, but apparently if you need 19 drinks, you can have it in the Ascent. But I do like the two-tone that you get in here, part of the Onyx package. And this light green stitching with the Autumn Falls exterior uh, paint color reminds me a lot of the Aston Martin F1 livery for this year, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Step in. I'm 6'1", sitting behind myself where I would drive. I've got inches of knee space. I've got a little bit of headroom. Not totally, I might like a little bit more, but it's okay. I've got vents here. I do have a climate zone back here, and I've got two level heated seats. I've also got a USB-C, USB-A, and look at that, more cup holders. You wouldn't believe it. Of course, you've got storage back here, and the seats even slide and recline. It's not bad. Here's a question for you. Yeah. Can you get the captain chair in all trims? No, you can only get the captain's chair, or you can only get your Onyx edition, excuse me, with captain's chairs. In other trims, you will be able to get a bench, but not in the Onyx. Please don't make that face. You just let me live my truth. That's not your truth. If that's your that's truth, it's a damn lie. <laughs> I know you, that's not your truth. <laughs> Now I want to talk a little bit about some of the luxury features and some of the technology features that you get here, starting with some of the Lux touches that you get. You do have three level heated seat, which get really genuinely hot, which has been pretty nice this week. You don't have cooled seats on this trim, but you will get it in the top trim ascent. You also have a heated steering wheel. I don't like that you don't push it, you pull it. So just a weird thing. But anyway, uh, you also do have a full panoramic roof, or at least you would if it wasn't completely covered in snow and ice, but you do have it. You don't have a head up display. You do have like little LED lights that will flash up onto the windshield glass to indicate if you're drifting outside your lane, but you don't have an actual head up display. You don't also have a fully digital instrument cluster. You get this small TFT screen. Again, this is kind of at the lower end of the segment. A lot of competitors are bringing full, uh, um, excuse me, full digital instrument clusters, but you do still have analog gauges here. Some people will like that, some people won't, but just something to mention. And then here, you've got your upgraded, or I believe it's standard here, 11.6 inch Starlink infotainment system. It's okay. The graphics are kind of a little Fast and Furious 2001 for me, and it's not the fastest thing, but it works okay. You do have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It'll show you the weather, which has been really depressing this week, but you also have a driver monitoring system, which is also very aggressive and watching your eyes. You do have a 360 camera, which is small, but I guess you have it. It'll also do a really funny thing. You push this button down here, which is your camera button, and it'll do a full 360 scan 
You know how in Toyota they have that weird egg view? Well, this is Subaru's version of it. It'll show you each angle of the car, but it's going to turn the screen off and then come back on, which is just kind of strange. But we'll it's like they back. didn't want to pay for the transition yeah, like or it, develop it. It, it, it. it doesn't seem like it should be that hard. Like in the Hyundai Kona that we were in last week, a subcompact two or maybe even three classes down, we had like the fully autonomous, like augmented reality style 360. Anyway, we don't need to talk about that anymore. We should talk about the climate though. You do have physical buttons for your temperature, but it is all in the touch screen for your actual um, fan speed as well as the rest of it in here. You also get Harman Kardon audio, which sounds pretty good. And with the Onyx package that you get here, you have gray two-tone seats, as we mentioned Green before. Green stitching as well. What do you think about them? I think they look great. I think this is the spec I would get. And then in terms of safety, you do have Subaru's EyeSight system, which was updated for this year, and it's now standard in your Ascent. What is also standard is the auto emergency braking and the adaptive cruise. It's nice stuff to have. The last thing we'll talk about before we head out for a drive is the price. And this Ascent actually represents a reasonable value for the segment. This is starting at $34,000, which makes it pretty affordable for the segment here. Yeah, the Telluride is $1,000 more. The Palisade is $2,000 more. Grand Highlander is almost $10,000 more. And the CX-90 is just about $5,000 more. So pretty good value, especially considering it comes with all-wheel drive as standard. So let's get on the road and talk about our favorite and least favorite things. Oh, the CVT. Oh, it was just traction limited. Amazing in the snow. That's Amazing actually in the like snow. legit good in the Let's snow. Let's talk about our three favorite things, then our worst, or at least, sorry, that's a bad way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> and then what we would get in the segment. I can start. Okay, go ahead. So my three favorite things. I would say the first thing is the Onyx package or trim that we're in here. I really kind of like the interior bits that you get, the stitching, the green, and then the exterior. Um, it's basically all blacked out. I really like that in the color as well. Um, yeah. Second favorite thing I would say is the price. It's a lot cheaper than everything else in the segment. Really like that. And then the third thing, and how could you not mention it, the all-wheel drive system. Yeah. It's just so great. Well, especially this week. And you mentioned it like earlier, like why does everyone in Colorado own a Subaru? It's, yeah. it, it was just super confident all week in the snow. Uh, so yeah. Your favorite things? My favorite things, that, and I'll just also reiterate because we have the same favorite things. It is like the it represents the value in the segment. Mm -hmm. Like this may not be the newest, the most advanced, the most tech feature rich, but it does everything pretty well. It's just not going to be like super innovative, but it also is it has a price to reflect that. And I can start with my least three favorite things. So uh, the first one being the main reason you buy this thing is probably for the third row and it has the least amount of space. Yeah. Um, that's very unfortunate. The second thing is it has like all the features and tech that I want, but I just think the quality and how well it works is just not as good as some of the competitors. Like it has a 360 camera and a rear view camera, but it looks like it's a fish lens from the 2006 skateboard video yeah. or something. It's just like everything is very, it's still very Subaru here. Like the interior design and materials are all, reminds me of the cross trek that we were in, which you know, mm -hmm. I guess I'm not expecting like Mazda levels of interior here, but I would like a little bit nicer stuff. And then, yeah, the third row is a bit small. Is there anything else that you don't like? The last thing is just no plug-in or hybrid or yeah. just hybrid option in general. And then you also have um, not that much power, obviously, in this engine. So <laughs> yeah, that's so a, it's, it's the least powerful and the least efficient, efficient. just about. And no hybrid or plug-in hybrid option. Yeah. So that's are the, the three for me. What about you? Yeah, I think, I mean, I share the same exact things that you said. I think what it comes down to for me is with all those things that we just said, it kind of comes down to the fact that this is just getting a little bit older for the for the segment mm. you know everything's moving towards hybrid everything that's coming out that's brand new is like kind of bringing more tech or bigger screens or that sort of thing so this is a little bit older it's a little bit more old school but you do get a little bit more value because it is less expensive for yeah. that reason so i think with that what would you have in this segment we're What's talking that? highlander or excuse me grand highlander cx90 palisade telluride this i guess highlander honda pilot Let's have you go first. Me first. I, um, I do. So if it was, if I didn't really need the third row, it would probably be the Mazda CX-90. I don't know about the plug-in hybrid, but maybe the straight six would be would be kind of my jam. I was about to say, because I thought we didn't really love the... The, the P-Hev needs a little bit of finessing, yeah. but I think the straight six would be a little bit better. Okay. Um, but if I just need something that was just 
basically a minivan, but I wasn't, you know, secure enough to drive a minivan. Mm -hmm. I would have the Grand Highlander. It's got the hybrid, it gets great fuel economy, the ride is fantastic, it's huge, so I think that might be what I would get if I really needed the practicality and utility. I think I would probably pick the Palisade, uh, and the main reason I'm saying that is because I wouldn't mind splurging a bit more for some of the lux that you get in that. Like, that has the yeah. Alcantara headliner, yes. which is really nice. Um, basically has a lot of the same features that this has, I just think they do it a touch better. And I also personally like the exterior look of that a bit more. And you also get more room in the third row seat, which is kind of the point of buying something like this. Yeah. No, the Palisade is brilliant. So I think with that, thank you to Subaru for letting us have a go in your ascent. It is good. I know we said some things that we didn't like, but ultimately it's not a bad vehicle. Not at so all. So thank you to them. Thank you to you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. See you guys later.